This is my branch garden at United Methodist Campus Ministries, two blocks away from the rest of my farm. Um, they bought the vacant lot next to them, tore down the, well, it wasn't vacant, they tore down the house that was here, so this is, all of this soil is on top of a former house foundation. And uh, so the soil quality was definitely dubious and I've been trying to establish a garden here on sheet mulch. This is its second year. The first year we sheet mulched it, but then um, the students who live in the building and were supposed to help to keep it going um, did not do a very good job of keeping it watered and weeded. And so the Bermuda grass took over the place and we had to sheet mulch it a second time. And because of that, the mulch is really still quite deep here. Uh, we used a lot of, of scrap green matter from the, the vacant houses across the street. Um, it didn't break down very quickly, so there are a lot of twigs and things in the, uh, in the mulch. Um, the goal of this garden is to produce vegetables for a local food pantry and a soup kitchen kind of a place. And so we're working with their wish list about what vegetables they would like. And most of what they want are summer vegetables, which is a little uh, a little tricky because, again, the people you know the people who live in the building are students and they're not really around in the summer um, at the time when these plants need help. So um, it's walking a, a line, trying to strike a balance between what is desired for the garden and what is really realistic. So we have a fence here in the middle. And the idea was to have peas and beans and tomatoes and things climbing the fence. Um, in practice, uh, most of the things that we planted from seed, the peas and beans, most of them have not germinated because of the deep mulch. So um, I tried to follow Ruth Stout's method of how to plant seeds in mulch. But you know what? She was using uh, rotted hay that was already mostly broken down. and this. You know, maybe next year, next year it'll be more broken down and we'll be able to plant seeds in it better. But um, not only have the seeds not been germinating, but you can see the tomatoes are looking pretty peaked from lack of nitrogen due to the mulch consuming the nitrogen, or, uh, or rather the soil life breaking down the mulch or consuming the nitrogen. So I need to get some, some uh, organic nitrogen over here and support them. We've got a patch here where the mulch was cleared away in order to plant some seeds. We've got a couple little seedlings coming up, but uh, it remains to be seen how well they do. We've also got some trumpet vine coming up because part of the green matter we used was trumpet vine. And again, do not do that. Whatever you do, don't use trumpet vine in your sheet mulch. Bad idea. Um, the brick border just gives us a, a guideline. I don't know how much good it's doing at keeping the weeds out, but or the grass, keeping the grass out. What it does, though, is give the person who mows the lawn a good border uh, to know where they're supposed to stop mowing. Um, so that's important in a community setting. So hopefully we'll get some tomatoes and peppers and onions and things out of this garden. Um, but really, for the most part, I think.